Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this body? Hey friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today I'm going to show you how to pick up your guitar and play the song Shallow. So this is a song from the 2018 version of A Star Is Born. I saw it a few nights ago. The movie is just in my head, and this song especially. So I wanted to work it out and show it to you. It's a fun one to play, and there's actually some really cool finger picking stuff going on here in the intro and the verse. And I'll also show you a cool, nice ways to simplify things. If you just want to get a sort of baseline version going that you can sing and strum along with in no time. So keep on watching. And as always, you can check out my website, playsongnotes.com. For the notes and tabs for this lesson and I also have a link to a printable version that's handcrafted by me it not only shows you the lyrics and the chords but it, it uses my notes as far as teaching you how to play this song and how to go about learning some of the more difficult sections and I also have all my notes and tabs for the simplified sort of arrangements I've worked out for some of the finger picking stuff there so it's just a few bucks you get access to this and all my other recent lessons as well so that's a great way to support me in this channel and it helps me keep the lights on and inspire me to keep making these lessons. So check that out, playsongnotes.com. And otherwise, let's get into this lesson. I'm going to start with the intro riff, which is also used during the verse. And then in the second half of this lesson, I'll show you how to do the sort of pre-chorus and chorus and bridge, which are a bit more strummy. So uh, buckle up and let's get to it. Okay, so let's look at the intro riff that uh, Shallow, the song, uses here, right? So uh, straight up, the full version looks and sounds like this, okay? So that's basically the, the full tab that's repeated in the intro for both verses as, as well for this song. So uh, what I'm going to do is tell you how to play this. And again, I'll do the simple version in a minute. So looking at this tab, you could just take this tab and run with it. And if you're proficient enough at guitar, you'll be able to do that, right? But I want to really teach you how to practice this because this can be a bit maddening if you just took this as it is and tried to learn it note for note. So what I would recommend is start with this tab and let's work backwards and then look at this version, which uses the same, this is the chord shapes that our hands are going to be in. And whenever you learn finger picking songs, it's important that you don't just study the, you know, the tab for the finger picked version of something. You want to like, sort of like think in your mind to work backwards and ask yourself, what are the chord shapes my hands should be in while I'm playing this? So we're going to go from this to this. Okay. Again, from this back to this. So this is where our hand should be while we're playing this. Okay. So first up is, um, this E minor chord. So let's look at these first three chords here. So the first three chords are an E minor. Okay, we're gonna use this voicing where our ring finger is gonna be on the third fret of the, of the B string here. Okay, and actually our ring finger is gonna be here for these first three chords. Check that out for this E minor, for the D over F sharp, and for the G. Our ring finger is staying perfectly still. How cool is that, right? I love it. So basically the E minor, the D over F sharp, and the G. So how to play these chords is, again, get your ring finger there. For the E minor, it's just a regular E minor, you know, like you normally would do. Second fret on the fourth and fifth string, right? But instead we're gonna have our ring finger here and we're only gonna play the thinnest five strings. So that's your E minor. For the D over F sharp, we're gonna keep our ring finger still, like I said, but we're basically gonna take our um, two fingers here and we're gonna sort of move them, make a little gap, right? It's like these are defenders and you're splitting the defense, right? You're going from open, second, second, open to second, open, open, second, okay? And then for the G, it's third, second, open, open, third. Okay, so again, E minor to the D over F sharp to the G. Now, let's look at the finger picking part that these three chords are gonna use. So basically, we're always gonna be on the low E string, the sixth string, and then the third string and second string, okay? For these first three chords. So the E minor is just doing this. Sixth, third, second, third. Practice that on repeat, you know, in a loop. Get comfortable with it. You actually could take these fingers off and you can still play it, right? I like to get them there just for habit, you know, kind of be responsible and get ready in case I want to strum it, right? So that's for the E minor. For the D over F sharp, we're gonna do the sixth string, but then play the second and third strings together. Okay, so once you learn the E minor, 
bring in the D over F sharp and just try to do those in sequence. Okay, one more time. And one more time again. I always lie when I say one more time. Okay, and then for the G, we're actually gonna, we're gonna pluck those three strings, the sixth string, third and second string all together. Okay, so those three chords in sequence. What I'll say here is, notice how on the four count, what I'm doing is bringing my hand back to the strings, my right hand, and I'm like silencing the D over F sharp before the G. So I'll count it and listen on the four count as I bring my hand down. I won't bring it down like super hard, but you'll, you'll see. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and That's a nice little technique. Uh, it's not really exaggerated in this song, but it's a good one to sort of uh, to do, I think, to get this effect. It makes the G more punctuated, right? Because you're killing the sound before the G, and music is all about the contrast between noise and silence. By creating the silence, you make the next chord that happens uh, stand out that much more. Now let's look at the back half of this tab. This is actually a bit trickier because we're gonna we're gonna deviate from this sort of ring, you know, this ring uh, ring finger magicness we have going on here. So the the third measure is um, we're gonna be in a C major shape, okay? Regu regular C major. Then it's five strings: third, second, open, first, open. Okay. We're actually um, we're gonna use the the first string in this as well. So, but basically, what we're gonna want to do is. First three plucks are going to be the fifth string, third string, second string on the one and two counts. Okay. Now, the, the following three counts are going to be basically our pinky down on that second string. So get used to doing that, right? Then we're going to go back down to the third string and then back down to the fifth string. So. and counts, we're going to do the open high E string and then back to the second string, which is where our pinky should still be, so. Um, this was tricky for me to do at first. It's like an unnatural picking pattern here, and this could may well have been uh, improvised when Bradley Cooper was playing this in the movie version, right? Just do it on repeat, get comfortable with it before we move to the G. messed up. Okay, when you get comfortable with that, we're going to go to the G. So it's a regular G we've already had, and then the D we're all going to play at once, right? So the G is bass note, second and third string, and then D is all three strings at the same time. So it's important to practice this transition from the C to the G because it's tricky, because we're basically going to go... That transition there from between the four and, that's, a, that's not a trivial transition, right? Because you really want, you need to get your middle finger here, to, or whatever finger you're going to use. I use my middle finger to that third string for the one count, right? But uh, you want to keep the counting consistent and stay in time, and then the one and Similar thing is going on here with the two count, where I'm going to bring my right hand down and silence the G chord before I play the D chord on the two and count. Okay, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so take that slow and make sure you get it good. And again, I'll show you a simpler version in just one minute. But for the final part of the D, what we have here in these final couple measures or final couple beats is a hammer on and a pull off. So we're going from open E string to second fret E string to open E string and then back to the second and third string of the D chord, right? But this is really what gives it distinction is we're going to pluck it once, but we're going to hammer on and pull off 
and that's going to create, it almost sounds like it's three different notes, right? But we're only plucking it once. And then, okay, so that. Now if you can't do the hammer on and pull off, I'm not going to get too into it in this lesson. Just do a, you know, a first string, second string, third string, right? So the whole thing of the second half would be. So um, that's how you play the, the riff part. And again, that's how uh, Bradley Cooper is playing. And I think when I watched the movie, he was using some different fingerings at a few parts, but let's not, let's not worry about that. Um, now, I'll say, if you wanna simplify this, what you could do is basically use these chord shapes instead. And the benefit of these is our ring finger is gonna stay on the third fret for all of the chords, right? And this is where I like to bring in, I like to call these the magic ring chord shapes of the, E minor, D over F sharp, and G, right? And then to the C, and then back to G, and then back to D. Magic ring, because I like Lord of the Rings, and it's your ring finger, and it helps you do magic magical things by just keeping this easy, right? So you could do the same timing, right? One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Now, that's the same timing, and what's cool about this is once you start singing, this actually becomes very advantageous, in my opinion, because I can't do that finger-picking style uh, that you hear in the intro while I'm singing. My brain just doesn't really let those things happen, so I like to use these chord positions during the verse. So the verse of this song, it's going to use this exact thing, and here's a way you could finger-pick it by keeping your hands in these chord shapes, okay? So this finger-picking tab is based on these chord shapes, and that would be like this, right? So... Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you want more? Is there something else you're searching for? I'm falling. Okay, and that was very like, it almost sounds like classical music or something where it's very do 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 do. And that's not the style of this music, right? In this sort of country style. You don't want to be so precise necessarily. You want to kind of take it easy. So if I were to cover the, sing the verse, and I would just sort of, you know, look at these lyrics with the chords and kind of play it as you will, right? Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you want more? So I'm not following a tab here just sort of, I know when to switch each chord, and I'm letting my fingers dance, right? And you can kind of add silence if you need to. Maybe you want to strum the strings or do some grab strumming, like this instead. And in the bad times I feel myself. Yeah, so you can play it exactly like Bradley Cooper played it, or you can do the sort of very precise finger picking, and that's fine too. Or you can just sort of do a single strum, right? And add a few strings here and there. La, da, da. There's no real wrong way to do it, and that's the important part. But hopefully what I've given you here will be a different assortment of building blocks that you can put together to play it how you want. So that's how you play the intro and the first verse and the second verse of this song. Okay, so next let's look at the sort of uh, pre-chorus and the chorus because those are a little bit different. And for those, what I like to do is either just strum it with my fingers or use a pick. And I'll pick up my pick here, but let's look at the chord shapes we're gonna need. So, um, you know, a regular E minor is gonna be necessary. We'll need a D, right? We'll need a G. And uh, we'll need a C, which we already learned. And the A minor, very similar to a C. The one uh, weird one here is a A minor over G. What I do for this one is basically take an A minor and just pick up my ring finger and put it in that G note. Okay, so A minor, A minor over G. And you'll notice that I have an X over the A string on the A minor over G. What that means is my ring finger right here is just sort of leaning into the fifth string. It's like touching it ever so gently right up here. And that's making the fifth string like not make a sound, it's muted. So that's cool because I can strum all the strings and um, that fifth string isn't making a sound. And that's good, we don't want it to, right? So A minor, A 
minor over G, right? It's also there's like a C over G. And then we have a B minor, which is second, fourth, fourth, third, second. This is a tricky one. It's a bar chord. You only need this in the bridge. Basically, we're going to have to bar the second string, thinnest five uh, strings with our um, index finger here. And then we're going to do, you know, fourth, fourth, third. So second, fourth, fourth, third, second. Then we'll need an A major as well. So open, second, 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 open. So these are the chords we're going to need, right? We'll need these for, to play the song. So, okay, so the first part that will need this strumming is the pre-chorus, right? So this is going to be, I'm off the deep end, watch as I dive in, they'll never meet the ground. A minor to D heard us, we're far from the shallows now. Okay, so the pre-chorus is basically A minor, 3, 4 to D for four counts, and then the G to D to E minor, 2, 3, 4. And you play that whole thing twice. Now I'll say for, the, for both these Ds, you could do a D over F sharp. It's totally up to you. Sometimes I play it like that, right? Or I'll do a full D chord and I'll second, open, open, second, third, second. But honestly, you could just use a regular D for this, it's fine, right? So, I'm off the deep end, watching the diving. I'll never meet the ground. Crash through the surface, where they can hurt us. We're far from the shallows now. I'm doing a down, down, up, up, down, up, down. Now for the chorus. In the shallow, shallow. In the shallow, shallow, la la In the shallow, shallow. We're far from the shallow now. Okay, so basically very similar from A minor to A minor for G to D to three four to G D. Minor, two, three, four. Minor, two, D, to G, D over F sharp, E minor. Okay? So that's basically how you do the pre chorus and the chorus, right? And I use that simple strumming pattern I showed you. Now, the part where Lady Gaga goes awesomely crazy with singing, it's going to be seven measures of four counts each, right? So E, B minor, two, three, four, to D, two, three, four, to A. Right, so after that sort of uh, bridge section, you go back to the pre-chorus and you play the pre-chorus chorus and you're good to go. So otherwise though, it's just use a strumming pattern, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, or whatever you want and you'll be in good shape for this song. So um, I hope you liked this lesson. I hope it was helpful for you. And uh, remember, if you support me on my Patreon page, you can get access to the printout of this, which is a nice way to learn the song, you know, outside of staring at a screen and you also support me and help keep the lights on for this project of mine. So uh, this has been David Potts. Make sure you check out the website playsongnotes.com and uh, I hope I see you around soon. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.